and Kaiji R is a character of death reducible representation uh, corresponding to the same operation R. So this is the most important guideline for the great orthogonality theorem rule number 3. Rule number 4 and 5 are fairly simple. Rule number 4 says that in a given representation, the characters of all matrices belonging to the operation in the same class are same or identical. So characters of the same class are same that is rule number 4 and the rule number 5 states that the number of irreducible representations in a group equals to the number of classes in that group this is the most important thing how would you decide that a particular point group have the uh, these many numbers of irreducible representations of course by just looking at number of classes so number of classes is equal to number of irreducible representations of that particular point group so having uh, the five postulates or five points of the great orthogonality theorem it's quite easy to understand the character table to make it to construct it and so on now a very important thing that you should note that there is a different scheme of nomenclature as proposed by rs mulliken for irreducible representations is based on certain rules certain assumptions and they are as follows so please note them very carefully so that you will be able to understand the various character table first thing one dimensional irreducible representations are either given by a or b two dimensional irreducible representations are denoted by e and three dimensional irreducible representations are always denoted by T. 1D is symmetric with respect to rotation that is the principal axis are indicated by A while if they are anti-symmetric with respect to principal axis then they are determined by or denoted by B. So this is the difference when to use A, when to use B. We should A, we should use A when the characters for principal axis if are positive then we we'll say that it is A and if the characters for principal axis are negative then we say is B that it, means it has undergone a transformation. Similarly sometimes you know we give a labeling of different kinds so sometimes we get A1, B1, A2, A2, B2 etc. So symmetry with respect to C2 normal to Cn or to a sigma V is indicated by the subscript A1, B1 etc. Anti-symmetry is indicated by the subscript 2 and sometimes it is like A2, B2. So for a symmetry with respect to a C2 normal to Cn so if you are talking about the character for C2 then a1 b1 a2 b2 terms can be used symmetry with respect to sigma h is indicated by primes a prime by anti symmetry is indicated by double prime so symmetry with respect to sigma h is indicated by primes a, a dash or a prime or anti symmetry is indicated by e double prime e double dash and so on symmetry with respect to center of inversion i is indicated by g that is eg or anti-symmetry is indicated by u, garret or ungaret, jared or ungaret as whatever you pronounce it. So it is ag, eg, au, bu, etc. E and T require some more labels, but they are not quite easy to assign. Where you have learned that in crystal field theory, the D orbital splits into EG and T2G set of orbitals. Now that you can see that E stands for double E G and T stands for triply degenerate set of atomic orbitals. Sometimes it is quite easy to un understand that the character of plus one indicates that the basis function has not been changed as a consequence of symmetry operation while minus one shows that that particular basis function has reversed. That is x has gone to minus x, y to minus y and so And the character of zero indicates that the basis function has undergone more complex changes. So that is sometimes you know quite not easy to understand. Now we'll just examine a few character tables say C2H point group. So if you talk about C2H point group you see that there are three characters the total sum uh, symmetry elements are four one E C2 I and sigma there are four order of group is four number of classes they belong to each different class. So number of classes are four and therefore there will be four set of irreducible representations. Now you just look at here total irreducible representations are four all of them are one dimensional a and b are of course terms used for one dimension and the character of uh, identity is equal to always dimension so they because they are one dimension the character for identity would also have one each so this is one 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 this is one and this is obtained by squaring the characters of the first row that is also plus one the rest of the elements can be filled according to uh, the orthogonality concept that the net result should be zero so there should be two plus ones and two minus one so and that how we can generate this particular 
character table. You can also verify the orthogonality. You take any two initial presentations and you'll see that their product has to be zero. Now, uh, the question is why AG and AU notations not A1 and B1? Because here we are talking about I. I is there. So if it is symmetric with respect to I, the characters are positive. If it is anti symmetric with respect to I, the characters are negative. And therefore, AG, BG, and AU, BU terms have been used here. Talk about ammonia molecule which has a C3B pointing group. It has the six number of operations order is six and number of classes are three. So identity is one class. C31, C32 is in one class and sigma B, sigma B dash and sigma B double dash. Sigma B, sigma B prime, sigma B double prime. They belong to the same class that we have studied in earlier videos also. So there are three classes and as a consequence there will be three identical representations. They have been denoted by A1, A2 and E. One dimension, one dimension and two dimensional irreducible representation respectively. Then you can also verify the orthogonality and you just notice here that we have term used term A1, A2, E. We are not to use term A, B and E. We could have used it. But because the characters are positive with respect to rotation in both the cases, uh, I would not use the term B. Instead, we are using A1 and A2, etc. Because they are uh, they are negative only with respect to uh, the vertical plane. So that's why A1 and A2. Similarly, you just refer to a point group D3H. It has as many as 12 number of symmetry elements. There are six classes. Then there are irreducible representations indicated by primes. A1 prime, A2 prime, E prime, E double prime, and so on. You can understand that why we have used for C2. Because C2 is negative here. Then we are using the term primes for A1 dash and A2 dash to differentiate them and so on and uh, the rest of the things that is orthogonality. Yes and of course one more thing E is a two dimensional irreducible representation so its character is two here and here also. The rest of them are one dimensional so you have one, 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 one and E for E there are two. So you can just assign it, you can verify orthogonality and Notice why primes don't be on B2, etc. So you can find yourself. The tridal point group has uh, a very peculiar uh, 24 number of symmetry elements, symmetric number of classes being 5. So there are 5 number of uh, irreducible position A1, A2, E, T1, T2, A1, 1 dimension, A2, again 1 dimension, E, 2 dimension, T1, and T2 are respectively 3 dimensional uh, representations. And you just notice that this is 1, this is 1, this is 2 because it's 2 dimension, this is 3 because it's 3 dimension, this is also 3 because it's 3 dimension. The rest of the first row characters are 1. That is quite obvious to understand and similarly the octahedral point group you also work out for yourself and try to understand the orthogonality concept here also. So this is how you can talk about uh, the character table in a part. In the next part that we will talk about the remaining things uh, that are very important again. But then, then before winding up the work we have to describe the summary. So a character table has the following components. First point of the molecule, number two symmetry elements and operations, number three classification of symmetry elements and operations and their classes. Even if you don't know about it mathematically, you can just by observing, you can find out the classes. Number of classes gives number of irreducible representation. Rule number five, the great orthogonality theorem. Dimensions can be obtained by the rule one of the great orthogonality theorem, the scrum of the squares of the dimension equal to order of group. Once dimensions are decided, characters are identified for 1D, 2D, 3D, etc. for identity and other characters can be used from the orthogonality concept rule 2 and 3. So this is how we can use the character table and understand the component. Thanks for watching dear friends. See you in the next video.